My mental health journey started um, just over three years ago. I lost my mum um, to cancer and it was a stage of my life that I had everything going for me. I was out living in Australia, playing football for a living. I was living with my friends and really enjoying day-to-day -day life, had a great job. And then I received the call to say that my mum's cancer had uh, spread and that I needed to come home immediately. So I came home. I managed to um, get a week with my mum before she sadly passed away. And that was really the start of what I understood as my mental health journey. I went back to living with my dad and we lived, um, just me and him, in a, in a rural country town. And he was grieving. He just lost his wife of 25 years. And I thought the best thing to do was to swallow up my feelings and be strong for him. And the process of swallowing my feelings ate me up inside, really did. I went through long periods of depression. I went through a lot of anxiety, specifically social anxiety, not wanting to go out because I don't want anyone to ask how I am or ask how my um, how I was feeling or, or have to raise the topic of my mum because those social interactions scared me. Um, there's a stereotypical stigma around men that we have to be the breadwinner, we have to be strong. Crying's a weakness um, and because of that and because it's so ingrained within society and within friendship groups, within school um, and the way that we grow up within the, those sort of environments, I think it creates this narrative that we can't open up. It's 13 men a day now that on average are, we are losing to, to suicide. And that in itself is around the, the number of a, of a football team. It only becomes real when it's one of your friends and that's far too late. So I came up with a concept around how I started talking um, and that was when I was two pints deep. I had that extra feeling of confidence. I had, it almost felt like a safe space. I could say what I want um, and people may not even remember it because we're all having a couple of pints and it felt, felt warmer and it was a gateway for me to open up. My friends were great when I opened up to them. I had one or two friends um, within the group that had also lost parents. So it was a topic that because I raised, they were happy to speak about. It's something that they'd not spoken about before to the friendship group as well. So we were all quite alien to the, the aspect of opening up. But as soon as someone did, the rest followed. And I think that's such a, a poignant part of the journey for me. And in the creation of, of the page, the community Two Pints Deep, that's so, um, the arrowhead of everything, that vulnerability is, once it's shared, it's, it's spread and it feels better. One or two pieces of advice that I would give to men out there at the moment is, is not to completely change what you're doing right now, just change one thing and that one thing being, try and speak to someone that's close to you. If you don't feel like you can do it for yourself, it's so important to do it for your mates because they might need to hear it from yourself to actually feel the confidence to be able to say it. It's trying to make vulnerability cool, in a sense, and it's trying to show people that vulnerability does keep your friends here. And having that shared responsibility of that and knowing that you can provide in the right environments for people to be vulnerable as well.